Harleen Quinzel. Call me Harley. Everyone does. I'm surprised you want to intern here at Arkham. I've always had a thing for extreme personalities. You can't deny there's an element of glamour to these super criminals. I'll warn you right now. These are hardcore psychotics. Most would rather kill you than speak to you. I'm sure I'll be fine, Doctor. They'll eat you for breakfast. I mean it. One or two of them will enjoy it, too. Be careful. Patient interview number one. So, I'm your first, and I tops. And you know what they say, you never forget your first time. I'll try to make it memorable for you. Oh, you already have. Tell me, why do you do the things you do? Why do you think I do it? Fame, notoriety, a desire to stand out from the crowd, a wicked sense of humor. <sighs> You're good. How did you figure me out, Doc? I've had doctors poking around in here for years, and no one was as astute, and if you don't mind my saying, beautiful as you. Really? Ah, oh, you're just playing with me. Well, you'll never know, will you? Unless... Unless what? Tell me! Care to tell me how these got in my office? Simple, really. I put them there. Why? You don't like flowers? I think the guards would be interested to know you've been out of your cell. Oh, if you really were going to tell, you already would have. How do you know I haven't already? Oh, sweet. I like you. I really do. Even your name. Rework it a bit and we get... Harley Quinn, like the clown. I know. I've heard it before. It's a name that puts a smile on my face. It makes me think there's someone here I can relate to. Someone who might like to hear my secrets. Really? Go on. Not here, my dear. Too many ears and eyes. Come back tonight. I'll be ready for you. He's crazy, you know. Who? Batman? No, Santa Claus. Of course, Batman. Always Batman. I've seen it in his eyes. Screaming mad starters. And dishonest. Hiding his face behind a fright mask. Well, no masks for me. I have nothing to hide. I laugh at the cruel absurdity of the world. But Batman, Batman, he's got them all fooled. He's made them think he can make a difference. That he can actually make things better. And the joke of it is, they all believe it. The police? The police. The media. The frickin' Junior Rangers. Every last sack of walking meat in this urban cesspool. Listen, sweets. Batman knows we're all on the same funhouse slide into madness. Why won't he admit it? He's up there in his belfry laughing at us. And the real gag is, the miserable liar is allowed to run free while I'm in here. That's really incisive. Then you understand, don't you? You know why I do what I have to do. You know Gotham's only real savior is me. I got what you wanted. You did? I mean, uh, good. How did you smuggle it in? Uh, actually, I don't want to know. So are you ready to stop that evil, murdering bat once and for all? Of course I am. He needs to pay for what he's done to you. Give it here, then, quickly.
Take patient interview. Subject has no recorded name. Alias listed as the Joker. In the room is Warden Sharp and myself, Dr. Young. Oh, is this another one of those boring psych evaluation tests? No, it's not. So, you're the famous Joker. In the flesh. So, Doc, do you want me to look at the ink blots again? The first one is a kitten I had when I was a child. The second is... Hmm, let's see. A dead elephant. The third is a... Funny. Now let's skip the jokes. Skip the jokes? Hey, Sharpie! Didn't she get my permanent record? Be quiet, clown! Every doctor that has ever interviewed you claims a different type of psychosis. Everything from multiple personality disorders to, well, the list is endless. <laughs> I do my best. Well, I don't believe it. Anything can be cured given the correct treatment. And you think you can cure me? Oh, I know I can. Take patient interview 17. Joker remains uncooperative. My earlier diagnosis remains true. I believe he enjoys his persona too much. What's up, Doc? Today I thought we'd try something different. Oh, you make me blush, Doc. I have a girlfriend. Dr. Quinzel, I know. I've seen the tapes. I saw what happened. What can I say? I'm a charmer. Anyway, I thought it would be good to talk about your childhood. Oh, ever heard of romance, Doc? I don't give up the goods for free. You'll have to try harder. What are you hiding? Didn't you hear me? You scratch my back, Doc, and, well, I won't have you wrapped in plastic and left in a gutter. Take patient interview 20. Joker is more interesting than I originally believed. When Project Titan is operational, I believe Joker will be the perfect test subject. Good afternoon. Today I thought I'd skip back to our previous conversations about your family. Of course. I was born in a small fishing village. I always wanted to join the circus, but my father wouldn't really let me. I don't believe you. My father was a cop. One week from retirement with a mob. I've seen the movie. What are you scared of? Scared? Yes, scared. There's obviously something. Something that made you what you are. What if... What if I'm too scared to remember? It hurts too much. Then I can help you. These are the private notes of Dr. Young. Titan is a success. Even my funding worries have been solved after the unexpected donations from Mr. White. Joker has also shown a remarkable interest in the possibility of a cure. Once the protein bonding process is finalized, I will... Dr. Young, you ready? Oh, yes, yes, come in. You'll hurt my feelings, Doc. Keeping me waiting like that. Sit down. You can leave us. You sure? We're fine. Aren't we, Joker? Oh, yes. Well, if you insist, I'm just outside, okay? So is he here? Did your patient X arrive? Yes. I must say, progressing more rapidly than I expected. Uh, uh, but enough of that. Let's talk about you. No. Let's talk more about your Titan project. My what? How do you... How do I know you have Bane strapped to a table in the basement while you pump him dry? Would you believe a lucky guess? I've been a fool. Joker was behind it all. He's Jack White. He gave me the money, pulled the strings to release Bane. How could I not have seen it? blackmailing me. He has a crazy plan to create an army of monsters. I want out, but... Uh, hello? Hello? Dr. Young's office. Please call for Mr. White. What? Hello, Doc. We need to talk. I'm not doing the Joker. Do you hear me? Wait. How did you get access to a phone? Oh, Childhood. Another lie? Who knows? I certainly don't, but let's not get distracted with details. So, anyway, I want my monsters. I said 
get you back the money. I, I don't want it. Do I look like I care about money? <laughs> I just want my monsters, Doc. And if you don't give them to me, well then, it won't be funny. Patient interview 21. Patient's name is Edward Nigma, also known as the Riddler. So, Edward, Warden Sharp tells me you've been leaving threatening riddles scrawled on the asylum walls. Again. One would have to be severely paranoid to read threats into harmless riddles, Dr. Young. May I test you with one? Very well. What is it that walks on four legs, then two legs, and finally three legs? A human being. As a baby, it crawls on four legs. As an adult, it walks on two. And in later years, it uses a cane. <laughs> Good try. But the answer to all three is a baby. True, it crawls on all fours, but cut off its legs and it can only wiggle on two limbs. Give it a crutch, it can hobble around on three. You see? It's horrible. How can you even joke about that? Easily, Doctor. It's not my baby. Taped interview 39. Patient's name is Edward Nigma. At this point in time, I have yet to decide if Mr. Nigma is a suitable candidate for the Titan process. I'd like to talk about your childhood. Miserable. Next. By all accounts, that is where your fascination with riddles began. I believe discussing those years could explain your compulsive behavior. Very well. My father hated me. Always called me a moron. I was determined to prove him wrong, so I entered a contest at school. A $20 prize to the kid who could figure out an almost impossible logic problem. I won, of course. And that pleased your father? Hardly. He was convinced I had cheated. He kept yelling, you must have cheated! Admit it, you moron! You cheated! I swore I didn't, and he hit me for lying. I'm sorry to hear that, Edward. Don't be. He was right. Patient interview 44. This is yet another interview with Edward Nigma. I have yet to make up my mind whether he's a genius or just deluded. Whichever one he is, just being in his company is both irritating and exhausting. Hello, Miss Young. You look tired. Anything you need my help with? No, thank you, Edward. I am here to help you. We all are. <laughs> Forgive my arrogance, Doctor, but if you think I need your help, well... You're in the right place. Let's look at it a different way. Throughout your career, you have specialized in bizarre traps and convoluted clues that more often than not result in the death of the unfortunate participants. And if the citizens of Gotham were smarter, my games would be merely an amusing diversion. Instead of death traps. You really should be thanking me. Weeding out the ignorant, the stupid, the useless. But don't worry. I'm sure you would survive. What a lovely photo on your desk, Doctor. Your family. Mother, perhaps. Put that down! Get out! Go on! Let's discuss your obsession with Batman. Hardly an obsession, Miss Young. I simply feel an obligation to expose him. You know who he is? More important, I know what he is. What do you mean? It's obvious. The mask, the weapons, the scare tactics. He's a criminal. No different than Joker, Two-Face, or myself. Most people consider him a hero. Most people are idiots. They can't see Batman for the villain he is. Riddle me this. How did he get his car and his gadgets? I don't know. With money stolen from the criminals he defeats. Why does Gordon turn a blind eye to his antics? Batman bribes him! The answers are right in front of your stupid, gawking face! Edward, please, calm down. Wake up, Gotham! <laughs> no sane, law-abiding man does those things. No one's that selfless. Batman is as vile as they come. Security! Security! This is 
is my final interview with Edward. I have gone as far as I can. I can no longer tolerate his mood swings and tantrums. I have more important work to be getting on with. He will be transferred to Dr. Whistler's care as of next week. Good morning, Doctor. How are you today? Fine, thank you, Edward. You're in a good mood. I'm always in rare spirits when I'm about to be released. Edward, you know you don't come up for parole for another three years. First thing I'll do is have dinner at that Italian place on 19th Street. Seriously, Edward. I only hope Joker hasn't completely trashed the city. Oh well, I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. Wait, have you been in contact with the Joker? He escaped Arkham weeks ago. And yet, one hears things. What things? What have you heard? Oh, something about a surprise party for Batman. I forget the rest. You know Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edward, if you know anything, you've got to tell me. Lives could be at stake. What did Joker say? You forget, Doctor. I'm the one who asks the riddles. Patient interview one. Patient was referred to me after the incident with Dr. Murphy. He appears to have suffered a breakdown of sorts. I believe it was brought about after the loss of his wife and child. As yet, the patient has been unable to speak. Continued observation shows little mental activity. It's as if the shock of what he saw triggered his mental collapse. There's someone in here! It's him. We found him. Break down the door! Note to self. As ever, it is difficult continue my research under such conditions. Step away from Dr. Cole! Now! Get down on the ground! We found them. Someone get a medic! Oh God, what's he done to him? Patient interview six. Dr. Crane has been back in custody for three weeks. Regular sessions have been inconclusive. I am not sure he is actually insane. Good evening, Stephen. How are you tonight? I'm conducting the session, Jonathan. Of course. If that helps you cope, I wouldn't have it any other way. Let's talk about the events three weeks ago. What did you think you'd achieve? Dr. Murphy is still in therapy. I wanted to understand him. His personal demons, his fears. It's all quite fascinating, really. But you are... were a respected doctor. A brilliant mind. Now just another resident in Arkham. Can I have a drink? A strong one? This kind of question bores me. I'm afraid not. Interesting choice of words, Doctor. Tell me, what are you afraid of? Patient interview nine. Dr. Crane continues to evade questions. I believe he is quite sane, just evil. He takes no interest in the people he has hurt. His research appears to be the only motivating factor in his life. What is it about fear that drives your obsession? Fear drives everything, Stephen. Everything. Your life is governed by fear. Every decision you make is a product of that fear. Don't be ridiculous. You married your wife. Margaret, isn't it? Because you were scared of dying alone. You have children because you're scared of leaving nothing behind that really matters. You go to the doctors because you're scared of dying. Do I need to go on? No. I think that will be all for today. Guards? Today I have another interview with Crane. I cannot say I am looking forward to it. I have been feeling anxious. I don't like to admit it, but... I think he's getting to me. How are you today? I keep telling you, this is my session. It was your session, Doctor. But not anymore. Are you okay, Doc? Uh, I think... Yes, I... Oh, he's fine. Just questioning his grip on reality. You should be doing the same any second. Mom? Is that you? Wait, what are you doing? Get off of me. Asylum in 
get a new one. My experiment is underway. Working alone, I have created my ultimate fear gas. Its potency, a revelation. Session 2. Patient name, Waylon Jones, a.k.a. Killer Croc. So, is this the part where you try and reason with me? Find out why I did it, Doc? We're here to help you, Mr. Jones. You got a cure for me then, Doc? Can you make me normal? Normal is a poor choice of words. No one's really normal, are they? <clears throat> Figured as much. So, how about this, Doc? You let me go now, and I won't eat you. You don't really eat people. It's just an urban myth. Oh, you think? <laughs> Keep believing that, Doc.
Natasha is lucky to be alive. He lost a lot of blood. Me too. I nearly choked on that bony hand of his. That's disgusting. He could have died. He's just food to me. And once I get a taste, I want the rest of the meal. You know what I mean. Get him out of here. Now. <laughs> Got your scent, you lady. I'll see you around. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Taped patient evaluation one. Patient name is Victor Zaz. Diagnosed clinically insane after the murder of at least 20 women in the Gotham area. Hello, Victor. I'm Dr. Cassidy. Seeing as this is our first session, let's spend some time getting to know each other. I don't need to know you, Miss Cassidy. Everything is meaningless. Don't you think that's a very negative outlook on life, Victor? You've no doubt read my file. Yes. Yes, I have. It says you come from a wealthy family, that your parents died, and how you lost all the money gambling. And none of it matters. Why do you keep saying that, Victor? Because the only thing that does matter is the mark. Have you seen my work, Miss Cassidy? If you're referring to the marks on your... Of course I mean my tally marks. And I have the space for yours. Do you want to see where? Taped patient evaluation five. Victor is not responding well to treatment. Victor, yesterday we spoke about the people you killed. Ah, the zombies. They are all people, Victor. They are zombies. Continuously shuffling through the daily grind, waiting for someone to liberate them. You mean kill them? The police report states that you've murdered, or liberated, if you like, 20 young women in the last three months. Each had her throat slit and was left posed. They were all lucky to be chosen to receive my gift. I doubt they would agree with you. Really? How about you, Miss Cassidy? As you take the elevator to your apartment each night, open the six locks to apartment 433, Remember you forgot to buy your cat food. Again? How do you know where I... you sit down on your favorite red chair, cat on lap, just waiting for something to happen. I can make it happen, Sarah. I am your salvation. Patient's name is Victor Saz. For the record, the patient has transferred from Dr. Cassidy who is on leave after the incident last week. Hello, Victor. Please, take a seat. Guards, you can leave us. Sorry, Doctor. Warden's orders. I can't leave you alone with him. I understand. Hello, Victor. How are you feeling today? Victor, I can't help you if you don't speak. Depressed. Does that help you? Can you get into my mind, Doctor? Why depressed? I'm just thinking about the one that got away. The one I chose. I needed the mark. I want the mark! Victor has been more subdued recently. Response to medication has been poor. Touching. Hello, Victor. Touching. Is there anything you'd like to talk Touching. about today? Touching. Victor! Touching. This is going nowhere. Touching. God! Touching. Get him out of here! You heard the doctor. Get out. Didn't you hear me? He's got a knife! Oh, get a try and get him! Get a try and get him! Oh, God! He's on Bill! He's cutting him! Get him off! Get him off! We need help here! Victor.
leader has been in isolation since the attack on Zagar last week. As I wait for him to be brought up to me, I have had time to review his notes. I am increasingly worried he cannot be cured. He has no empathy for his victims. Deep down, I believe he views all of us as potential victims. Doc, are you okay? What's happening? It's Zaz. He broke out of isolation. He's gone. Oh, God! Don't worry, Doc. You're the safest place. He's definitely left the island. Of course. But someone needs to alert the authorities. He'll need to kill again. Do you understand me? Needs to. Oh, no. He's gone after Dr. Cassidy.